Hello, it's me, Ariza Gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Sandbox Showcase, the series where I talk about problems in Oxygen Not Included and how you can solve them easily and efficiently. So today I want to talk about Dracos and how I like to ranch them in the early game, but I also want to talk a little about the Iridio map because this is a case where early Draco ranching could be really important. So if we just zoom out here, um, you can see we're on an Iridio map. This is a classic style asteroid and the whole asteroid, apart from a few specific zones, is above 30 degrees C. So the starting area is a bit cooler. The teleporters and a few features like the story traits are a bit cooler. The radioactive biomes from the spaced out DOC are cooler. The geyser areas are cooler. And then the space biome is also cooler now. But apart from that, all of the map is above 30 degrees C which means that you're going to struggle to produce large amounts of food early on because you have a forest to start. So you, apart from your hexalut fruits that are right here to collect, your mealwood plants won't actually grow because it's too hot. It's above 30 degrees C. So you're probably going to want to lean on ranching to start generating your initial food. So this video will talk about how you can ranch Dracos really early on and you can set them up so that they're giving you materials for the rest of the game while also being your starting food source and just generally managing to fit buildings together in the Drekka ranches in a way that really helps out your duplicates and gets a lot of important things going quickly on your Iridio starts or maybe even your other starts. So let's begin. So first of all, what are Drekos? So if we have a look at the wiki, you can see the uh, Dreco is a domesticable critter likes to hang out in the jungle biomes that are full of chlorine and hydrogen. And they can live at quite hot temperatures, which is obviously good for radio. The, the regular Draco will go up to 110 degrees. The uh, glossy Draco will go up to 80 degrees. And the Dracos will eat a range of different plants and produce phosphorite. So there's three different plants that Dracos eat. They eat pinch of pepper plants, which can grow in any gas and will grow above 35 degrees C. The balm lily, which will grow only in chlorine, but doesn't actually require any fertilizer. So a lot of people recommend actually using balm lilies for a food source. If you keep your Dracos in a chlorine room, you can just feed the Dracos the balm lilies and then you can just eat the Dracos. And that doesn't require any inputs and you can have it be as hot as you like. So that's another way of doing it on Iridio. But I'm going to talk about a slightly different build that mostly leans on the pinch of pepper plants. The reasons I'll explain in a minute. And then they also eat mealwoods as well, but as we discussed, mealwoods need to be cooled on the Iridio map to actually grow. So we're not going to start with the mealwoods. But there is another variant of the Draco. There is the glossy Draco. So while the regular Draco actually produces reed fiber on its back when it's in a hydrogen atmosphere, um, the glossy Draco will produce plastic. And when you shear both of these Dracos, you can get the products from them. Reed fiber is used for clothing, for insulation, lots of other things. Exosuits is a very important early game resource and being able to get that to progress into the mid game and getting that on lockdown early on is really important. And it's the same with plastic because plastic is used for all sorts of buildings. It's used for uh, orbital data research and it's just a very useful resource to have. And Glossy Dracos are a pretty good source of this resource. Um, they like it a bit cooler and they only eat mealwoods and bristle blossoms, which are both plants that require it to be a little bit cooler. But this build that I'm going to show you will let you get your hot Dracos set up first and then cool down an area for the glossy Dracos so they can eat their cool plants and you can get the benefits of all the extra plastic. So now that we know what the Dracos do, let's actually clear some room. Um, and let's actually put this at 35 degrees so it more accurately simulates what we're going to have on an Iridio asteroid. You can do this on other asteroids as well, so long as they have Dracos. But I'm thinking Iridio is probably the case where you're going to find it the most useful. So let's start with the basic layout. So I'm going to put some ladders here. And this is going to follow the standard four tile high room structure that I like to use. It's just very convenient for fitting a lot of buildings in it and generally something I like to do. So we're going to use insulated tiles for this. There's going to be four different rooms and one of them at the bottom is going to be 27 tiles across at the bottom. It's 
it's going to go up to where the stash of salt vine seed is. So this bottom room is going to be the cold room where we keep the glossy dracos. So we're going to keep that sealed off, and we're going to get rid of we're going to get rid of uh, this shine bug. Yeah, here you go. Get rid of that too. Goodbye, random critters. So this is the room where we're going to have the glossy dracos. And then we're going to make a room over here that is one tile shorter. And this is where we're going to have the regular Dracos. And then we're going to have two more rooms up here where we handle all of the products and the excess critters, etc. But I'll talk about those in a little bit. So, let's put some doors on these. So this room is going to be hot. We're going to heat it up so that the pinch pepper plants will definitely grow. And then we're going to also cool this room. So this room here will be below 30 degrees. And that's where the glossy Drecos and the mealwoods will hang out. Because we're going to use the mealwoods in the Iridio Star to feed these glossy Drecos. Right, first things first. Let's actually put down some grooming stations. You're going to need a duplicate that can groom critters. So if you're doing a start and you want to do this right away. Apart from having your really good research to help you get all these techs right away. You might want to print a dupe initially that starts with skilled critter ranching one so you can just start ranching right away the the excellence on the map will last you for quite a while especially if you stick with just three duplicates but if you're doing that i'd recommend going with a skilled critter ranching one duplicate so you can just jump on this ranching right away so we'll put in the grooming stations i'm I, i've made this build so that you're going to enter through the left side generally so we're going to put stuff that the duplicates are going to use on the left side and stuff that primarily the Drecos are going to use or no one's going to need to go in that area for on the right. So we're going to put some grooming stations over here. Uh, and then we'll also put in a critter drop-off so that we can just wrangle the wild Drecos and put them in this room to start and wrangle any other Drecos we find and put them in these rooms later. We're going to set these to maximum of nine critters because we're going to use the new critter combo building to actually increase the number of Drecos that we have in these ranches. And we're going to set these to priority 9. And then this is going to be very similar, and that's just going to have the, the glossy Drecos in it. So let's actually just spawn in one of each Dreco, just so we can set these things. Here is the regular Dreco. Majestic and beautiful. And here is the glossy Dreco. So, Drecos up here, glossy Drecos down here. Uh, so this one is going to be set to Glossy Dracos. And again, we're going to keep it a maximum of nine critters. Now, we need to make these rooms 96 tiles. So if I unpause it for a second. So currently these rooms are too big, but we're going to be filling them with other tiles to get them down to 96 tiles. Each Draco type requires 12 tiles of space each to be happy, but adding a Critter Condo will let us add one extra Draco to the room while still keeping them happy enough to breed at the maximum rate. So 96 tiles will result in 9 Drekka. So we've got the critter drop-offs, and then we're also going to put in the shearing stations. So these machines are what your ranchers will use to actually get the reed fiber off the Drekos and the plastic off of the glossy Drekos, respectively. So those are important. And then we're going to start to want to put um, auto sweepers in here as well, because these guys could be laying the eggs, and we want to get the eggs out of the room right away. So I'm basically going to build these rooms left to right, and you'll see what I mean. So this auto sweeper is going to go above the shearing station here. So that way, the extent, the left-hand extent of the auto sweeper's range just about covers the room. And this is very important for this bottom room, because this bottom room is going to be 27 tiles wide. We're going to have three sweepers that aren't going to intersect in their areas, so that we can cover the whole room. Because the challenge with this build is really actually just fitting everything we want in, <laughs> in the rooms, um, as I go through and explain it. So we're going to put some conveyor loaders in as well, so that we can get all of the eggs and other materials out, and where we want them to go in this build. So we'll stick the conveyor loader here, and then... For this room down here, I'm actually going to stick with a conveyor loader here. Um, it doesn't really matter, well, it doesn't matter where you put it, but it has to be in the range of the auto sweeper here. Each auto sweeper needs to be able to access at least one conveyor loader so that they can 
definitely get all of the eggs out of the room as soon as they can while they're hatched to avoid these guys getting crowded and then not producing more eggs. Because they are a primary food source, we're going to be letting the eggs develop into adult Dracos, and then we're going to murder them, and then we're going to get the meat. And with 18 Dracos breeding and producing eggs, that's going to produce 8,000 calories of barbecue per... That's going to produce 8,000 calories of barbecue per day once it's all spun up. So that's enough for eight duplicates, provided the meat is getting cooked and the egg the egg flow through these ranches isn't being interrupted. So some more things we're going to put in. Uh, we're going to put in lights because the duplicates will shear the Drecos 15% faster when there's a light source and they're getting the lit workspace buff. Um, the lip workspace buff doesn't apply to the grooming station because it's a fixed animation when they're actually grooming the critter. So we don't need to worry about that. So we're going to put in some duplicate motion sensors and we're going to put one up here for the glossy Drecos and we're going to put one over here for the regular Drecos. And the, the placement of these, you need the automation port of the building generally to be in the range of the motion sensor because the automation port is where the duplicate will stand when they start the errand. So, so long as the area lines up, the duplicate will trigger this sensor when they're using this machine and then it will actually activate the lamp. So we're going to put in a few different lamps. Put a floor lamp over here and that's going to cover the shearing station here and it's going to cover another building over here that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, whereas we're going to use a ceiling light over here. And to be honest, actually, what you could do, forgive me, we're actually going to move that conveyor loader up here. Yeah, we're going to move that conveyor loader up here, and then we're going to put a floor lamp in here, because the floor lamp is technically more power efficient, and we have the space, so that's fine. We're just going to set these conveyor loaders to all. So that's going to go like that. And then you're just going to want a little bit of automation wire to go in here. Now, starting refined metal... There will be, yeah, here it is. There will be a lump of uranium in your starting biome somewhere on a radio. And that will contain about a ton of lead that you can mine out. So that will give you enough fine metal to build stuff like automation sensors, automation wires, etc. But this build is also going to help you refine metal. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But that's one of the advantages of this build is that it lets you fit in a metal refinery and get it running straight away as soon as you get the tech to unlock it managing the heat etc without scolding your duplicates so we'll talk about that in a minute so you just want to hook up the duplicate motion sensor to the lamps uh i guess this why well, will just go over here not too much complicated automation going on all right so we have our illuminated cheering station we have our egg management for the area where the dracos are in some of my videos, I often restrain the critters to a certain area um, to make it so that they don't take as long to get brought over to the grooming station. I'm not doing that with this build because the Drecos need to eat plants that are actually planted in farm tiles. And they're going to take up most of the room in, in these ranches. So it's not really feasible to restrain them in this case. But that's not, that's not too much of a problem. So yeah, we're going to put a metal refinery in here. <laughs> And we're going to actually use the pinch of pepper plants that we're growing for the Drecos to handle the heat when we produce our first lots of metal. So it's going to go here, and this lamp will light up this uh, metal refinery as well while the duplicate's running it and giving you the 15% uh, work speed bonus using that, so that's good. And we're going to hook that up to some more stuff in a minute. So I'm just going to go through the rest of the regular Draco Ranch first while we're doing this. So let's see. Let's see. Right. We're going to feed this with polluted water as our coolant. On Iridio, there's a fairly good amount of polluted water just hanging out. If I zoom out, you'll see there's lots of these sort of marsh biomes. They're hotter than usual, but they're full of polluted water. This is already actually at the right temperature to feed to the pinch of pepper plants as is. So you can feed the pinch of peppers even if you're not using the metal refinery. All you need to do is go and find a big pool of it somewhere, set up a pump, and just bring it straight to the ranch. And that's not a problem. But we're going to use a dev pump just to save some time. So that pipe is going to go into this room. Again, the temperature of the liquid doesn't really matter because we're going to heat up this room. So that's going to go into the metal refinery here. 
And then we're actually going to put down some hydroponic farms for the pinch peppers. So, these plants, we're going to use the insulation. We're going to use the insulated tiles to make sure the plants stay warm and to make sure the mealwoods down here will stay cold. So because of that, we're actually going to put the hydroponic farms in the insulation tiles. And as a result, because the pinch of pepper plant is three tall, we can't actually put anything in the space where we put these plants. But I think this is important just to make sure the plants stay at the right temperature. So I'm just going to put down all eight tiles for now, just so you can see where they go, and then we'll fill in the blanks. It's, it's going to look a bit random at first. <laughs> but there's enough room in this ranch for eight pinch of peppers. We're going to have a critter condo. So that is going to go over here in this gap between these two pinch of peppers. And you're, you're going to want to make this out of igneous rock. Well, it'll overheat at 75 degrees. This room is not going to get above 75 degrees because then that's going to start scolding your duplicates. This room, this ranch will be fully operable without Atmo suits. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to make sure the room doesn't get above 75 degrees C. So it doesn't actually matter what you build this out. Ignore me. So the critter condo is going to go over here. That's going to make the Draco happy when you've got nine of them in the room. And each Draco, if we look at the wiki quickly, they will consume, it says 0.8 units per cycle of pinch of pepper. It's actually 0.75. So eight Dracos will eat six pinch of pepper plants. But because we're going to have an extra Draco in here, we need 6.75 pinch of pepper plants in here, continuously growing for the Dracos to reach around and munch on. Uh, but we've got room for eight. So we're going to have 1.25 extra pinch of pepper plants available for just producing peppers for your espresso machine or your, your uh, plant pulverizer or whatever you want. Let's go there. We'll just spawn in some spawn in some of the seeds and then actually plant the plants so you can see where they are. And you find these pinch of pepper plants just in the jungle biome with the Drecos in it. So you're always going to have access to these immediately. So let's see. Yes, pinch of peppers. Get those across. So you can see that's how much space the plants actually take up. And it's quite a lot. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to put an auto sweeper here. So this auto sweeper here will cover eggs for these nine tiles up to the middle of the metal refinery. And then this auto sweeper is going to go here. So you'll notice that the range of the auto sweeper will reach all six of these uh, pinch of pepper plant farms and it will reach the rightmost tile of the metal refinery so between these two auto sweepers those 18 tiles of the ranch are covered for egg collecting and then we're going to need to put another loader in for this so that loader is going to go up here and it's important that you have the output of the loader the loader part of it um, below the farms because this auto sweeper is only going to reach that part of the loader but that's fine that's going to go there. You're going to set this to all again. It's absolutely fine. So there's your plants. And then what we're actually going to do is we're going to set up a thermoregulator in here. So the thermoregulator is quite an underrated building in my opinion. Um, it's, it basically takes heat out of the gas that goes into it. And it, it, it outputs the heat at the machine itself. So it will heat up the machine and it will cool down wherever the gas is exchanging heat with. So we're going to use this regulator to cool down the room with the mealwoods in it. Because it won't need that much cooling. The, the aqua tuner is more power efficient. But what you can do is you can hook the regulator up to the same uh, conductive wire as the metal refinery. And not have to run two different conductive wires. So I'm just going to use this because it's a bit easy to get set up at the beginning. If you have a thermo aqua tuner, you're probably going to require a different setup for that to prevent the building from just overheating the whole area. Thermo aqua tuners rarely are suitable for running in gases like this, but a thermo regulator won't produce so much heat that it's going to be an issue. You'll want to make this out of gold amalgam, um, so the overheat temperature of the building becomes 125 degrees. Um, it shouldn't get above 75. The building, the thing is, the room temperature shouldn't get above 75 degrees. But depending on the conductivity of whatever's going on, the building might occasionally get above 75 degrees. So you want to build that out of gold amalgam. You can find gold amalgam in the marshy biomes right next to your starting biome where you're getting the polluted water. From. So that won't be an issue. So we're going to put the thermoregulator there and I'm going to hook up all the piping later. And then what we're going to do as well 
is we're going to actually set up a liquid reservoir at the end. And this is going to let you get more usage out of your metal refinery early on. And also just help regulate the temperature in the room in general. So we're going to make that out of... Yeah, we're going to make that out of copper ore. That's all fine. And we'll hook up the piping in a sec. The last... The last auto sweeper is going to go directly above the Criticondo here. And that's actually going to be able to reach this tile as well. So these two auto sweepers can both use the same loader. And then that covers the whole area. So the whole area of the Dreco Ranch is now covered for egg collection, etc. Uh, so I'm just going to... So now I'm just going to actually hook up some wires. Um, I'm just going to put a dev pump over here. Obviously this build isn't self-powered. Um, but... You'll, you'll find different ways to power things on the Iridio Asteroid. There's large deposits of coal in the in the jungle biome. Like you can see here. So just setting up some coal generators to get this started is absolutely fine. So I'm just going to set up a dead pump here. And we're just going to start hooking up some wires. Um, it doesn't really matter where you bring this. And as you're getting this metal refinery online, you'll be able to get the metal produced to actually make these wires. So that shouldn't really be an issue. So I'm just going to hook these all up here for now. And then I can just go like that. That's absolutely fine. So there we go. We're getting rid of the red alert slowly by slowly. So in terms of the liquid. So we're dumping, we're dumping the environmental polluted water into the metal refinery. And then what we'll do is we'll take the outflow pipe here. We're just going to use regular liquid pipe for this. This doesn't need to be insulated. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the we're actually going to use the pinch of pepper plants to eat all of the polluted water from the from the metal refinery. Now they're going to eat it quite slowly. Um, each pinch of pepper plant uh, consumes 35 kilograms of water per cycle. So with eight of them consuming, that's going to be 280 kilograms per cycle of polluted water consumed. So that's not a huge amount in terms of how much coolant is actually being used in this metal refinery. So it's not going to be a massive throughput on this unless you feed this polluted water to more pinch pepper plants, which we are going to do. But it's enough to get you started, which is the important thing to me. So then once it goes through the pinch pepper plants, we're just going to lead it down to this liquid reservoir and we're just going to send it back through here. And I'm literally just going to... Let's see... How do I actually do the piping for this again? I think I just did something like this. I think I literally just put a bridge on here. And then what that will do is that will recirculate the liquid once, once the metal refinery has stopped outputting its waste coolant. Then it will go into the liquid reservoir and it will recirculate on this loop once this is finished. So the temperature of the temperature of the output coolant that's been heated up will equalize throughout the room and keep these guys warm and make the temperature manageable and keep the Drekos warm. So that's what we're going to do with that. And that's going to run through these farms. So then that's pretty much everything done. So <laughs> duplicates are on the mission to actually uh, get these things loaded up. It's fine. Um, in terms of what metals you're going to make, um, you've got a load of aluminum ore in your starting biome, so you can just set this to start making aluminum. Like, if we get a duplicate to just dig this tile quickly, you can set that to making some aluminum, and you can see how this machine will operate. Oh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Wait a second. I need to set this to polluted water. Okay, so we've cleaned up the water situation. We now have polluted water actually coming out of this machine, so that's good. So we're going to fill up the metal refinery and we'll get that material in there. So one thing to note is when the Drekos actually eat the plants, they'll excrete phosphorite. And these plants require phosphorite to be fertilized. So you'll need to mine a little bit out of the map to start with. But again, you can find big lumps of this in the jungle biome where the Drekos are. See, this is all phosphorite here. So I'm just going to brush them in and we're going to get these plants initially fertilized. But the Drekos will be able to actually keep up with... Um, how much phosphorite these plants need. So each of these plants 
requires uh, one kilogram of phosphorite per cycle. When the Dreco eats, when the Dreco eats the um, pinch pepper plant, it will produce ten kilograms per cycle when properly fed. So, it does seem like it's actually going to produce enough phosphorite to keep these sorted out. I generally don't have any issues with this, but I can't say from experience whether they they keep up with it entirely or not because usually I just mined up a load of phosphorite anyways. But in any case, the Drekos are handling all of that. So then, yeah, we'll just hook that up again. This is slowly filling up. We'll just set aluminium to aluminium ore. Now, different metals will produce different amounts of heat when you do them in the metal refinery. So in this case, the aluminium recipe will increase the heat of the polluted water by 27 degrees. So if we're getting it from the map, usually if we're getting it from the map, that's going to be about 35 degrees. Add 27, that's going to be 62 degrees. So we're not going to want to reuse the coolant twice, otherwise it's going to be too hot for this room. But if you use it once and then just recirculate it, that will make sure that the room stays around that temperature. Um, other metals require other um, produce uh, produce more amounts of heat when you're actually mining them or refining them. So let's actually build some just to show you what I mean. Yeah, so now Lindsay is using the metal refinery. Um, one thing to note, the, the thermal... The insulation isn't a perfect heat seal. There will be a slight amount of leak coming out of these doors, but generally it's not enough to stop the build from working properly. So there'll be a slight inefficiency because of heat escaping from here and here. Later game, you can set this up with transit tubes or something so that there's no heat leak in this room. But starting off, you can have a little bit of heat leak and it's not going to be the end of the world. So we're making the aluminium. You can see the polluted water is heating up by 27 degrees. And if you're using colder polluted water for whatever reason, say if you're not on a radio start, this will heat up the polluted water to the point where it is going to satisfy the plants. And because it's hot water, it's going to exchange heat with the plant right away. And this temperature will eventually equalize above 35 degrees. The plant starts off a bit hotter and it will cool down to the environment as it's growing. But you can see the pipe is hot. It will go through here. You can also use radiant liquid pipe um, if you're making it with the refined metals anyways. And because you have aluminium here, you can just actually get them to make some aluminium radiant pipe once you have that technology and put it in these tiles and just make sure that you've got that heat exchange going on. But yeah, if we have a look at some of these other recipes. So cobalt ore will produce about 29.2 degrees of heat for the polluted water. Copper will produce about 19.2 degrees of heat for the water, so slightly less. Gold amalgam produces by far the least. Um, so if you don't have access to a gold volcano starting off, and you don't mind using some of your gold amalgam, refining that into gold will get a very small amount of heat increase and keep the temperature in this room relatively low um, and gives you gold for whatever you want to build out of gold. Iron produces a relatively large amount of heat, um, so it'll heat the polluted water by 32 degrees which is still manageable, but is on the cusp of sort of what's really manageable with this um, build in the Iridio start without scolding your duplicates. So yeah, Harold and Nails building the Radiant Pipe, and we'll see what that looks like in a minute with the temperature exchange. So now you can see these are heating up right away. This room is going to heat up. These plants are going to stay hot, and they're not going to have any issues anymore. So use your first lot of refined metal just to make that... Um, just to make that aluminium and uh, get those plants heated up. That should be fine. And then that liquid will just keep recirculating through here when this isn't in use. When this is dumping coolant, it will go into the liquid reservoir where it will all equalize in temperature. And then once it's stopped, the loop will just continue to run and it will continue to equalize temperature of everything. So there you go. That's pretty much the Dreco room. Now... There is something conspicuously absent, and that is hydrogen. <laughs> the Drekos, once they're shaved, they look very naked, and they grow their scales back when they're in a hydrogen atmosphere. So what we want to do is we want to fill the top, top two tiles of this ranch with hydrogen. We want to keep the bottom two tiles oxygen so the duplicates can breathe and they're not getting eye irritation, etc. And the pinch of pepper plants don't mind what gas they're in at all, uh, so long as there's at least 150 grams per tile of air pressure. So a mix of oxygen and hydrogen is fine. And what I recommend for this is actually, if we go over to this lamp, there's a little bit of space here that we're going to use. So that lamp is actually going to go 
like this. Yeah, so that lamp wire is going to go like this. And then we're going to put a gas element sensor here. And we're going to set that... Oh, wait, hold on. I need to... <laughs> I need to turn on um I need to turn on instant mill mode again. Right, let's just do that. Right, put that back. Do, 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 do. Send that wire around here. Um so we're gonna set this sensor to detect when there's hydrogen gas here. And then we're going to use a not gate to actually activate these to actually activate these vents. The gas vents that we're gonna use to actually let the hydrogen into the room. So that's going to go like that, and then this automation wire we're just going to send up here. Put a gas vent over here. We don't want the pressure to be too high in this room, so a regular gas vent is what you're looking for. We'll put one vent here, we'll put one vent here, and we do have room to put one vent here as well. We'll just have three different vents. You can get hydrogen from the jungle biomes where the Dracos reside, and you only need a finite amount of hydrogen. The Drekos do not consume the hydrogen to regrow their scales. So once you've dumped in the hydrogen in this room, you don't have to dump it anymore. So we'll just set up a gas pipe over here. We're going to fill that with hydrogen. Set this here. And then we're just going to use the automation wire to just make sure that these vents only activate if there's not hydrogen detected here. If hydrogen is detected here, they'll stop venting it into the room. So you can see at the moment they're closed. Now they're they're open again because it's detected there's no hydrogen. And then that's just going to come in here and slowly fill the room. And that won't take too long at all. And that won't irritate the dupes. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's basically this room, apart from the pipework or the thermoregulator. But I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. So we can put some crown moldings up here as well. So you can make these out of granite and get some extra get some extra decor going. You, there's not actually a lot of room for these. Like, you can see we've pretty much used up every available tile to fit all of these buildings in here. But if you build it in this order, you can fit everything in here like this. You can get your metal refinery in here. And that's all fine. You can see the temperature is hotter over here. There will be some heat leak over here over time, but that's fine. So now let's actually move on to the glossy Draco room. So this room is a similarly type of space. Now, these guys eat the mealwoods, and they eat one mealwood plant each per Dreco. So we're going to need nine of them, which is why this room has to be slightly wider. So that's nine farm tiles there. And then there's already mealwood seeds here, so we could just plant, just plant those like this. I'll spawn a few more in just so that you can actually plant them quickly. There you go, have some mealwoods. So the mealwoods are going to go there. Um, again, we're going to need auto sweeper coverage for the whole room. And because this room for the glossy Drecos is um, is 27 wide, we're going to have to put these equally spaced and they're not going to intersect at all. So that's going to go like that. And then each of these is going to require their own separate loader. So even though this looks kind of redundant, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put a loader over here. That needs to be in range of this one, so that's not actually good enough. That needs to go... That needs to go here. Yep. Um, so that that sweeper is going to correspond to that loader, and then this loader we're just going to put over here. Uh, we're going to have to put in a few more tiles just to actually close out the room. So you can make these tiles out of whatever. I'm just going to make them out of insulated tile. Then once we do that, you'll notice this room is now actually 96 tiles again with those three tiles up here and the nine mealwood farm tiles in here. And that's going to keep these insulated. This is going to keep these insulated. If you have these tiles where the insulated tiles are, they're going to leak heat out through there and they're going to leak quite a lot of heat. Because we have to keep these plants cool, it's imperative that we keep this whole room insulated to minimize the thermal transfer. So yeah, that's going to go there. Um, and then let's actually build the pipework for the thermoregulator because the whole purpose of this is to actually cool down the mealwoods. So we're going to put a gas element, uh, we're going to put a pipe gas element sensor here. 
It doesn't really matter what you build all this stuff out of. You can build it all out of lead if you want, or you can build it out of whatever metal you refine in here. And then we're going to get some automation wire. That is going to plug directly into this uh, rotated thermal uh, thermoregulator. And then the gas pipe for that. This gas pipe will need to be insulated here. We're going to fill this with the hydrogen that we're actually also using to fill the Dreco ranches. So we'll make this out of igneous rock. That's going to go in here. And then it's going to come out here. But we're also going to have it bridge over here. So what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that once we've set up our loop, that it reset, it prioritizes, well, it's going to loop the gas over and over again, and it's going to prioritize gas that's being actively cooled from this machine, because it's first on this pipe as it goes down here and snakes all the way around. And then if no material is being cooled, this won't be turned on, and then it will just go through the bridge to bypass it. So, so that's just what it needs to look like. You need to have the sensor immediately, be well, yeah, you need to have the sensor in the pipe immediately before the input for the machine. And then you have the bridge immediately afterwards and the bridge outputs immediately after the output of the thermoregulator. And then the rest of the pipe work is basically just whatever you want to do. So um, we'll just send it in here. It doesn't really matter what this is made of. Uh, you can make radiant gas pipe if you want as well. Uh, you'll have plenty of aluminium ore to do it. Radiant gas pipe uses metal ore. And it's relatively cheap, so you can just use it for all three of these and it's not really going to cause any issue. And you're going to have plenty of aluminium ore if you're on a, a radio start. So we'll just send that around here and then that can just go in here. And that's the complete loop. All you need to do then is actually just put a gas bridge over here. And then you can lead on your hydrogen from wherever you're getting it to fill this loop as well. And again, this loop won't consume the hydrogen. It's just going to fill up eventually. So you want to set this... Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> this isn't supposed to be a gas element thermo. There. This isn't supposed to be a gas element sensor. This isn't supposed to be a gas element sensor. This is supposed to be a gas thermo sensor. So that needs to go here. It's this brown one. So it needs to go there. We then need to put the automation wire back. And we need to make sure the gas is cooled. If it's below, if it's above 30 degrees, it needs to be cooled. So that's what you can set that to. You can set it a little bit cooler to get a bit more of a buffer as well. I'd probably set it to like 28, just to make sure local fluctuations down here don't cause the plants to stifle. So that's what I do with that. And then you'll see if we actually run the game for a little bit, that's going to fill up this pipe. Uh, at the moment, this hydrogen is cool, so it's not actually being cooled by this, this loop. You'll see it's just going to run down here. It's going to bypass the machine. And we're just going to fill it up. You see it's going partly into the vents as well, which is why it's occasionally coming through like that. And that, that loop is eventually going to fill up. It's not going to overfill because of how the bridge is here. And then eventually, yeah, that'll get all the way full. And now it's going to stop filling. You can deconstruct this bridge if you want, but it doesn't really matter. But this loop will run continuously, and as soon as the gas heats up, it will it will uh, run the machine. So we're going to need some dirt as well to fertilize the mealwood. Uh, obviously, you have plenty of dirt on this map. There's not really an issue. Um, <laughs> we're just going to make these dupes some facilities, and then, and then I'll be right back. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, we're back. So the duplicants finally have some actual facilities over here. And uh, you can see the hydrogen gas has filled this room. Um, a little bit of it is leaking out here, but you can see the vents are closed off. This sensor is active. So this will equalize over time and eventually just fill the top of the Dreco Ranch. And that's where the Drecos are going to, they're occasionally going to climb up here. They're always going to climb up here to actually reach the plants. So they're not going to be getting the scale growth 100% of the time but they're going to be getting enough scale growth that you'll get enough reed fiber for what you need in the other game. And I generally don't have any problems with them only being in the hydrogen half of the time. But we're going to want to set up some hydrogen vents down here as well to do the same thing. But there's a slight quirk with this. So the mealwoods, they don't grow in hydrogen. They require oxygen atmosphere. So we only want the top tile of this row really to be covered in hydrogen so the glossy dracos can grow their, their scales. They will still hang out in here on the ceiling so they will still get that scale growth 
but we don't want the hydrogen to impinge on the mealworms. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put in another gas vent over here. We want this gas vent to be quite far away from the actual mealworms themselves. Um, so that sort of space will do. And then we'll put the gas element sensor over here, I think. Yeah, because we want to make sure that this isn't venting hydrogen when there's when there's gas over here. And then that should keep it within the single tile sort of regime that we want. So let's just gonna go there. We'll, again, we'll put the knock gate on this as well. And then that's gonna go in here. So that knock gate can just come down this way. And then you just want to hook that up to your gas pipe wherever you're getting all the hydrogen from. So I can just go like that. That should be fine. And then what are we actually going to put in these rooms? So we've got nine mealwoods. So we have room for nine uh, glossy dracos in here. So we can put the critter condo just here in this case. And then we've actually got a little bit of room over here for some extra buildings. So what I would recommend doing with this, because you're going to have reed fiber being produced by these dracos anyways, I like to put the actual stations where you use that reed fiber in these buildings. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an exosuit forge down here. And we're going to put the textile loom down here as well. And then what we're going to do um, is we're going to set up some lights. Now, because there's only eight tiles here, you're not going to have room to put down a floor lamp. We'll cover these with one lamp. Like, if we could put this motion sensor here, then we would and cover it with one lamp. But this sweeper has to be here to actually cover the whole room. And we don't have... We don't really have room for two sweepers. So I'm just going to put down two automation wires instead and two lamps. I mean, either you're using the extra ceiling space on more auto sweepers or you're using it on extra lamps. It doesn't really matter what you do. You could put a sweeper here and a sweeper here and make it work. It doesn't really matter too much. So we'll just put those lamps there. Again, we'll use the automation wire to... Oh, oh, right, yeah. We'll use the automation wire to hook those up. You don't want to plug those into the actual buildings themselves. Just to automate the lights. And then we'll plug the wires in and just make sure that everything's powered. Yeah, it doesn't really matter how you do this. Yeah, that can all go there. And that's all fine. Set this to everything as well. And then that's all good. This could just be set to hydrogen gas. This could be set to everything. And then you can just set this uh, to produce um, ammo suits whenever you want. Once you've got enough refined metal. And I just I just set this to standard suits. You, you usually set this for fixed quantity. I'm just going to set this to infinite just to show you how it works. But you can make it all the standard suits you want in here. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the conveyor rails. So all of the stuff. What we're going to do is we're going to dump it in each room in this build sequentially. So it's going to get picked up from one room, dumped in the next room, etc. And that way we'll be able to use all of the products from these rooms and feed them into all of the other various things. Uh, there are other ways of doing this, but this is what I like to do. So... We're going to take this room where we're going to get the reed fiber and stuff and hook up these conveyor loaders here and they're going to go around the room because this conveyor is going to have eggs in it so you don't want the eggs to be in this room the longer it takes me order sweeper to actually pick it up and we're just going to dump everything in here and then these auto sweepers will pick up everything from this room and they'll dump it in the next room which is going to go up here so we'll just speed this one all the way around here i suppose you have plenty of metal. It's fine. There might be more efficient ways to do this, but this is just how I like I, how I settled on doing this today. So that's gonna go like that, and all that stuff's gonna get dumped in this room. So the reed fiber will end up here, and you can just automatically use it to make these clothes, etc. And then that's pretty much the whole build over here as well. You've got a little bit of room for some of these um, ceiling bits, but not a huge amount. So that, that's why I'm building these, just to show you how many available ceiling spaces you have. In fact, what we want to do as well, we want to remove this. We want to remove this crown molding here. And we actually want to put a thermo sensor here. And this is going to ensure that the, the metal refinery doesn't activate if the room is getting too hot. 
We don't want the room to get above 70 degrees because then it's going to start scolding the duplicates and that's not what we want. <laughs> so that's that wire is just going to come all the way around here. We're going to set this to send green signal if below 70C. And you can set that to whatever you want. But we're just going to set it to uh, below 70 for now. You can see this room is going to heat up as they do the metal refinery and then this is going to stop once this room is too hot. And then all this polluted water will just keep getting recirculated and then that will keep feeding the peppers. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the whole room finished. So this isn't activating yet, but we'll leave it running and you'll see this activate and it will keep this room cold. Despite the, the hot Iridio map environment. So now we've got the Dreco Ranches set up so that we can have the regular Drecos and the glossy Drecos. Now it should be noted, these guys are not very likely to lay glossy Dreco eggs unless they're eating mealwoods. So what I would recommend to start with this build is fill up this ranch at first with Drecos. Once you've got these mealwoods cool enough um, with this machine, fill this ranch with the regular Drecos. They will eat the mealwoods and then they will start producing the glossy Dreco eggs. And then once you have enough grossly Dreco eggs that they can keep sustaining their own egg population, uh, then you replace all the Drecos in here with the glossy Drecos. And that's how you get both variants. So yeah, the next thing to do. So now we're going to have a load of Drecos. We're going to have a load of Dreco eggs coming in and we need to handle all of the excess Drecos because that's where our food is coming in. That's why we're doing this whole build is to get this food going early on. The reed fiber and the plastic and the metal refinery and the pinch of peppers is all like other nice stuff on the side that you could fit in this room. But ultimately, if you don't have food, you're going to starve. So how are we going to maximize the food that we get from these Drecos? Well, first of all, we need to actually handle all the excess Drecos. So we're going to do that up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a, we're going to make a seven wide room here. Yeah, that's seven wide. Um, we're going to keep this insulated as well. And I'll explain why in a minute. So this is where we're going to dump all of the eggs. So we're going to put a conveyor chute up here. And that's where this is going to end up. So all the stuff in these rooms is going to end up dumped in this room. And then we're going to put another shearing station in here. So all the Dreco eggs will land in here. They will mature over time. And then you'll end up with, eventually you'll end up with adult, adult Dreclets in here. And when they turn from a child into an adult, they will start with a full back of material to be shaped. So even though we're not going to have any hydrogen in this room, you'll be able to shave each Dreco at least once. So that's what this is for. We're also going to have this critter drop off here so that any excess Drecos we get once these ranches are full, we can just put in here. And this is going to be set to auto wrangle surplus. We're going to keep it at the max of 20. And then we're just going to put regular Drecos and Glossy Dreclets. And that's going to be at a lower priority. That's going to be at priority 8. Because we want them to go into these ranches first. And then what we're going to do as well is... You can also put an automated uh, dis automatic dispenser in here. Um, when you're starting off and you haven't got the mechatronics um, up and running with your mechatronics engineer yet. Uh, you could use that to just dump the eggs in here when you want to. You can set this to sweep only whenever this room gets cramped. You can put a critter sensor in here that can tell you when it gets cramped before you start building all of this stuff necessarily. You don't necessarily need all these vents either. You can have just one vent. So there's a few extra tiles in the ceiling of this ranch where you could fit a critter sensor and a notifier. Like over here would be a good area for that. And then you can set it to notify you when you get an egg to sweep up. And you can just put it in here and then you can do that until you actually get the mechatronics online. So that's where I'd recommend putting this. Um, once we have all the Drecos in here, we want to auto sweep everything in here as well. So put an auto sweep in here. That will cover the whole room. Put a loader in here as well. So that can just go like this. Absolutely fine. And then again, you're going to want a light in here for when you're actually doing the shearing to give your duplicate that speed bonus. So what I'll do is, again, I'll just put a motion sensor up here. Put a, put a ceiling lamp in because we don't really have space for a floor lamp. And again, we'll just plug all this stuff in. Doesn't really matter where you put the wires. 
and we just want to automate the light. So then we're going to end up with an extra space here, an extra 2x3 space that we can use for something. So when you're starting off and you're trying to get this up and running with your initial Drecos, I would recommend putting an incubator here. You can automate this however you want. I'm not going to show you how to automate it in this video. Um, I don't typically automate these. You'll usually have enough food that you'll get your first lot of Drecos going without necessarily having to incubate them. If you're running off coal power anyways, you can just run an incubator full time on the 240 watts. But the, the thing about this building is, is the du when it's powered, the duplicant will come by, hug the egg, and then leave. And then when the egg is hugged, it gets a 400% bonus to incubation rate. But the building doesn't need to be powered once the egg is hugged. So what you want to do maybe is set this on a timer where the uh, duplicate will get the errand to come in, do the errand, and then once the timer's expired, this machine won't be powered, um, the egg will be lullabied for a full cycle, and then the timer will activate again. But there's a few different ways for automating these, and you're not going to need these permanently. This is just to get your initial Dreco population increased so you can get your food production going as long as possible. So this is a spot where we could put the incubator and that's what I'm going to recommend for now. So yeah, if we unpause this, yeah, that forms a that forms a stable. You can put whatever egg you want in here. I'm not going to set this for now. And again, you can put whatever you want in here. Make sure to set this to sweep only though. So the adult Drekos will come in here. They'll get wrong, they'll get sheared once and then once the Drekos have been sheared, we're actually going to want to kill them <laughs> to get the meat. So I would recommend doing this automatically as well. And that's what the next part of this build is for, which is going to be a drowning room. So it's going to go over here. And I have I have come across a design that'll make this quite compact. So you can fit it in this little five by five area here. So you want to put a door in here as well. And we're actually going to want a few different doors. <laughs> So when you're getting this room set up, you don't necessarily have to have all the doors in here. Uh, but essentially what we're going to do is we're going to put another critter drop off in here. This is going to be set to uh, Drecos and Glossy Drecos as well. This is going to be lower priority. This is going to be priority five or maybe priority seven. It has to be lower than this one. So once this, fill once this room fills up with the adult Drecos, they'll get auto wrangled and put in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to flood this, uh, we're going to submerge this critter drop off so that the Drekos will start drowning in this room and they'll immediately want to escape. So to do that, we're going to put a mechanized airlock up here. And we're going to put two more doors in here and these doors are going to be open. And then what you're going to do is we're going to put three different types of liquids in here in small quantities so that it submerges the critter drop off without flooding it. So the three liquids you'll have on this Iridio map are salt water, which you'll have in the salt water biome, polluted water, which you'll have in the marshy biome, and regular water, which you'll have somewhere. And you don't need a large quantity of, of each of these liquids, just enough to get it to work. So you say you can put a bottle opener where these doors are to begin with, and just put like one kilogram of each liquid here. So the salt water goes first, then the polluted water. This is going to off gas a little bit while it's in here then you're going to want to cover that with some water as well. And you don't have to be super exact with this. The water is going to flood out. Again, you just want a small quantity each time. And then that water is going to flood out and it's going to partially fill this room, which is important. There we go. So you put in the water here and then a small quantity will flow into here and that's exactly what you want. So we'll build another manual airlock here and we'll hook this up with a, or a mechanized airlock, and we'll hook this up with a critter sensor. So that's going to go in here, and that's going to be set to activate the door if it's below one critter. So we need this we need this mechanized airlock here so that the water forms a closed tile. So what will happen is, let's just power this all first. So what will happen is the uh, Drecos will get moved into this room they'll immediately want to leave because they're drowning. And because these two doors are going to be open, the only way they're going to be able to leave is through these two open doors. And because this critter drop-off is on a separate room, um, it's not going to actually get... Um, 
it's not going to get maxed out. You're always going to be able to drop critters in here, no matter how many critters you have that you want to drop in here. So they're all going to leave. They're going to wander into this room. And what will happen is, let's just put a Draco in here as an example. Poor little guy. So Draco's in here. He's immediately drowning. He's giving us a stiff upper lip. Um, and he's immediately going to leave this way because it's the only way he could actually leave. It doesn't really matter how he does it. He's going to climb up and around in this case. So now he's out of the room. He won't go back in there because it's covered in water. And eventually, he's going to wander into this little bit down here. Yes, there you go. Amazing. <laughs> so now the door closes behind him and now he drowns again. And then, uh, yeah, we don't have to manually murder the critters. This is how we just drain all, um, this is how we just drown all the Dracos. And this will work with any critter that can move around this gap. So we've done this for like patches, sweetles, grub grubs, etc. in the past as well. So then you're going to want to put another auto sweeper on here. And that's just going to go into this, it's just going to go into this uh, conveyor loader as well. And that will pick up all the eggs and stuff. Um, not the eggs, the meat. I'll pick up all the meat and that will deliver it wherever you want it being delivered. So yeah, you can see this room is starting to fill up with the hydrogen. But not too much hydrogen. Um, these plants aren't being stifled because you don't want the hydrogen to be below this area. Now the duplicants will never actually want to wander into this area. Because these plants are just for the Drecos. They should all get eaten by the glossy Drecos in general. Um, and whenever they don't, they get auto-harvested. So, if your duplicates come in here and breathe the oxygen, the hydrogen might dip down because the oxygen pressure will be low. And that might stifle these temporarily, but that should very rarely happen. That's why we have the mealwoods in this corner, is to prevent that from happening. So, now we have our excess drecos handled, and they're all going to get turned into meat, and that's going to go wherever you want it to go, into your kitchen, etc. So, this is more or less... All you need to do at the start to get your Drecos online and to get your food. But there's a, a few more things that we can actually do with the Drecos that I'm going to elaborate on over here. So you'll notice that when they eat the plants, they produce phosphorites. And this is a renewable, sustainable source of phosphorite in the game. So what else can we use phosphorite for? Well, you may have noticed that these warts like phosphorite. These warts can be found on the Iridio asteroid now as well in the new radioactive biomes. And when planted domestically, they will consume phosphorite and they will cool down the area by uh, breathing in gas. But notably, they also produce radiation and you're going to want radiation for your research. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to build in a little research laboratory over here as well that uses the weeds warts and the phosphorite from the Drecos to get your radiation research going. So that's what we're going to do with all this space over here. So let's get rid of this shine bug and his egg. Feels bad. Yeah, there you go. So we're going to put the wheeze warts up here. This will be another four tile high room. And this is going to be a laboratory. So I'll put a door here. Um, we're going to put some... Yeah, let's just get the rest of the tiles done. So we're going to need insulated tiles going around here. Then up here. I'll remove that one for now. And essentially what we're going to do with these wheeze wards is we're going to put them in a triangle so that we can concentrate the radiation onto one Radbot generator. So it's going to look like this. And we're going to, yeah, we're just going to plant the wheeze ward seeds here. So let's actually just spawn some in. So yeah, you're guaranteed to be able to find these on your Iridio start in the radioactive biomes. So we need to actually make a way for the duplicate to get up there for us to actually set the thing. So we'll build some more ladders. It's all fine. So yeah, set this. There you go, plant all of these. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to set up another conveyor. We're going to use an auto sweeper positioned here exactly. We're going to rotate this. That's going to go here, and that's going to be able to reach all five of these farm tiles from this one tile here. And we're going to automatically feed them the phosphorite so that our duplicates aren't getting irradiated whenever they're doing this. Because you'll see once we actually plant these that the, the five wheeze warts will produce quite a lot of radiation. 
so that wire is just going to go here. And then we're going to send that up here as well. And we're going to build a rad bolt generator in the middle. So this rad bolt generator is going to require 480 watts to run. Um, which is quite a lot of power. You are going to make want to make sure that you have a consistent power source before you run this. You might want to put this on, uh, on its own power circuit to make sure it doesn't get interrupted for any reason. Wow, is this wire actually overloading? Oh, it is because we're using the metal refinery. Yeah, you might want to split this up onto more than one grid considering you've got the metal refinery running here and everything. So I'm just going to turn that off for now. But yeah, that's going to collect the uh, radiation from these wheeze warts. We've got one wheeze wart here at the moment. Produces a very large amount of radiation on its one tile. This is a pretty good tile for positioning it around all these wheeze warts. You'll see that radiation is just going to go up and up as these wheeze warts turn on. So, yeah, you guys shouldn't be standing in here, but you're just doing it for now. So, 15. Um, this is going to give you 154 rad bolts per cycle in this position. Um, not bad. Not bad. But yes, you shouldn't really get in here. Um, so eventually what we're going to do is we're going to set up a rad bolt joint plate and we're going to seal this room off. But what we're also going to do to maximize the actual cooling that we're getting from the wheeze wards, we're going to take our extra hydrogen and we're going to dump it up here. So you can just put vents on these two tiles. Just one vent will do, to be honest. Um, but the reason I put two in here is because... Once we seal this room off, so we'll put another insulated tile here. We'll put a rad bolt joint plate over here. Rotate that. You need plastic to make this as well, so you'll need to get this from your glossy drecos. So that can go there, and then we'll put down a few lead tiles as well, just to block the radiation over here, where we're actually doing the research. Um, so if we look at the radiation thing now, you can see there's barely any radiation actually getting through to the room where the duplicate is going to be standing and doing the research. So that's all good. And once this room is all sealed off, you'll notice we haven't actually vacuumed it out. If we actually keep the gases in here and we let the hydrogen into the room, because the wheeze warts actually consume the gas in the bottom tile and they output it in the top tile, if we keep venting hydrogen here, eventually... All of the oxygen is actually going to get replaced with the hydrogen. I'm not 100% sure why this works, but it does work. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second. So you can see it's taken, a, it's taken a little minute, but all the oxygen is actually getting shoved around. And it will eventually get deleted in this room. You can see it's all just jumping around a little bit. And I think it's because the wheeze warts are, are breathing it in at the bottom and expelling it out the top. And eventually it just gets deleted. We've got one little blob of oxygen left. Just wandering around here. Yeah, you can see the mass of the tile is actually going down as well. There we go. It's all gone. See? I'm not lying. <laughs> so, uh, yes. That room will eventually just fill with hydrogen. And because this, this plant will cool down the gas by an amount that depends on the specific heat capacity of the gas, that's why you're going to want to put the hydrogen here, because the hydrogen has the highest specific heat capacity of the gases. And it's relatively thermally conductive. So that's going to help add a bit of cooling to our whole setup over here. Um, you can see this room is still warm. This room is still cold. It's all good. So that's essentially what we need here. Um, we're also going to put in a chute over here and a loader. So that's just going to go here. That's just going to go here. Like plug this one in as well and then we're going to take we're going to take the stuff out of this room and we're going to put it in this room so that's going to end up in here and then this this one here this is the end destination for the phosphorite in this case so we're going to go in here and we're going to make sure the phosphorite gets turned off so all of our phosphorite will eventually get dumped on the floor here by the loader and then the auto sweeper will be able to pick it up and keep feeding these guys forever and then all of our phosphorite will accumulate here for whatever else we want to do. Um, something else we can do. So because this room is automatically being cooled down, we can actually put some more pinch of pepper plants in here, just like this. We can just take this whole setup and copy that across. We don't need to put anything up here, so I'll just put a crown molding up here just to show you that it's left empty. 
And then that auto sweeper can load this loader as well and keep supplying everything. So I can go in here. Um, and then we can just copy, copy these settings across. Get some more pinch of pepper plants in here. And then this will let you grow a little bit of excess pinch of pepper plant for your uh, your gas range, for your bracket production, whatever you want. Um, or if you don't want to use the space for this at the start, when you're trying to get your Draco population up, you can just fill this with incubators as well. That's absolutely fine. And you actually have room to put one, two, three, four incubators in here. And again, you could you could shift this around and put a fifth one in here while you're you're just getting started as well. So you can have this all be incubators to start and then replace it with your pinch pepper farm once you no longer need those. So yeah, we'll just get the auto sweepers to add all the seeds. Duplicants are desperate to actually do something. There you go. And then what we'll do as well is we'll just actually take the, the pipe that's going down here. And I think what I'll do is I'm just going to cut it off here. That can go up here. And then again, we'll use the radiant pipe for this. To keep these plants warm. So this will keep the area with the plants warm. And then the wheeze warts will help keep the temperature of the room down in general. So over time, this is going to help, especially with the lead tiles providing some conduction as well. This is going to help you cool down your polluted water in here a little bit while still keeping it warm enough for the pinch peppers. So those will start growing in a minute once they actually get some fertilizer. In this case, phosphorite. There you go. Amazing. So we've got that stuff in there. And what you can do as well is you can actually put a farm station in here and double the amount of and double the amount of pinch of peppers that you're growing in this room because this isn't used as another type of room. Um, it won't be relevant for these farm tiles here uh, because the duplicates won't be able to reach those to apply the um, to apply the micronutrient fertilizer anyways. So you don't have to worry about that. Then that will give you a, a sec. A, this will essentially give you twelve pinch of pepper plants worth of output. Uh, for your polluted water so that's what i recommend doing with that room and you can put some you can put some hanging plants here as well for the decor if you want uh, obviously not too important but yeah you can put some aeropots in here put some put some joyous seeds in here definitely want a plant that can handle uh, a range of temperatures depending on what happens so that's what that room's gonna look like and then so the end result is we're gonna end up with a lot of radiation in here as well as the the cooling um, so then we can just put our actual laboratory up here. And what I'll do is I'll just make a little room for that. Put some doors in here. So that's how big this laboratory is going to be. And we'll put the material study terminal in here. And then you're just you're just going to want a rad bolt reflector to go here. And actually get the rad bolts going where you want them to go. And then we can just put a, a motion sensor in here and we can put a light in here again. That's all good. We can just hook that up with some automation. Make sure it's all powered. And what I would say is you want to automate the Radbot generator so that when this material study terminal is full, this turns off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a I'm just gonna put a knock gate in here. So that's gonna go up here. And then when this fills up, this will turn red and turn it off. And that way you're not going to be generating rad bolts and firing them at this tile or whatever cr or uh, critter is in here. So that's how we um, do the manual study, uh, material study terminal. And then to make it a laboratory, we need one more research building in here. And I just like to put the virtual planetarium in here. Obviously, we're not generating data banks with this build, but um, fits in here pretty well. And uh, just lets you solve that problem as well. Because I imagine you're probably going to have your your um, basic research building and your supercomputer by the printing pod or, or somewhere else in your base to start with. So we'll just plug that in. And then you'll see that forms a laboratory and it gives you the extra efficiency bonus for having the two research buildings in the room. And then you've got this free space up here. Um, starting on... You could obviously just fill this with incubators, um, which is honestly what I'd recommend. You could put some automation up here, 
make sure that it's all timed so that they're only active when your duplicate is actually doing the hugging and then it's turned off. Um, but eventually you're not going to need all these incubators up here once you've actually got your Draco population going. So what I would recommend then is actually placing this here. I'm going to put a few different things in here. I'm going to put the clothing refashionator in here. And this will let your duplicates turn your snazzy suits into primo garb for the best decor bonus. And then we'll just put an order sweeper in here. Because um, what we're going to do is the snazzy suits are going to get picked up from this room. And they're eventually going to get dropped in this room. So we're going to put another auto sweeper and a loader in here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's all fine. And we'll put another shoot up here. And in fact, what I'm going to do is... I think instead of going that way, I'm actually going to take it... I'm going to take it this way. We'll dump all the other stuff in here. And then that conveyor can just go around this way. It's all good. Yep, and then we'll just power this all as well. So that can just go like this. I guess. And then we can make the Primo Garb whenever we want. So we'll set this to all as well. We want to make sure that this doesn't include any eggs. We want all the eggs to stay in this room. Everything else can get dumped around. Um, I realize now it's picking up all the random debris in here. So perhaps we uh, set one of these to just not let the random debris through <laughs> when we're actually doing this. But we still have a little bit of space left. And what we can actually do, because we're growing excess pinch of pepper plants, what you can do is you can put a... Put a... Where is it? Put a plant pulverizer over here so that it's under the light from the shearing station. And then your duplicates can actually make some bracken from the pinch of peppers. And we can actually shove some liquid storages up here. Yeah, we can just shove some more liquid reservoirs up here and end up making a load of bracken for whatever you want to use that for. It's not going to be a huge amount, but it is going to be something. So we can just do it like that. Set this to pinch of pepper nuts to bracken. And then that's all good as well. That doesn't actually require any power, which is quite nice. And uh, yeah, that's essentially the build. So this whole arrangement lets you ranch your Dracos, get their population increased and managed so that they can be your primary food source when you're starting. Um, gives you pinch of pepper nuts for the gas range, for bracken, whatever else you want. It also... Um, Gives you phosphorite, which you need to run wheezworts, which you need to get radiation for your radiation research. Um, it gives you a place to dump heat from your metal refinery into all these plants that will just consume and delete the hot polluted water, thus deleting the heat over time. Um, while also being able to house a thermoregulator that will keep your mealwoods cool, and thus let you have your glossy Drecos grow. So eventually this can all fill up. And you can keep dumping your, your things around. So what I can actually do is I can put this conveyor loader here on this line here and then everything will circulate. But you'll obviously want to set this to just not let certain things through. Otherwise you're just going to have your random debris just dumping constantly everywhere. But yeah, all the excess Drecos will get managed. They'll go in here, they'll get sheared once. And so long as the priority on the shearing is higher than the priority on the critter drop-off, uh, they will get sheared, then they'll get dropped off once they get over the population you want in here. You can set this to a lower value as well. You can set this to like five and really minimize the amount of spare Drecos you have. I like to have a few spare Drecos in here just in case. Um, just in case someone dies, we need to move someone somewhere. Uh, but that's all fine. And uh, yeah, this also lets you fit in all the buildings that let you handle your um, reed fiber to make your exosuits, to make your snazzy suits, to make your primo garb. And um, it, it has space for you to put your plant pulverizer in so you can make some bracken for whatever you want for that. Uh, the only thing... Oh, the other thing I'd recommend, actually. Hold on. <laughs> so these rooms we're not opening up because we don't want the the heat to leak out so much. It's not so much of a problem with this room because we've got the heating and the cooling going on. 
So I would actually recommend opening this up so that you actually have doors here. And then that will actually <laughs> that will actually ensure that you've got gas flowing back into this room so that these plants don't get depressurized and your duplicates don't suffocate while they're in this farm. Because this liquid setup will block gas exchange while dupes aren't wandering into this room. So you'll, you'll want to put some doors here and like maybe a ladder here or something. But yeah, your duplicates won't get too irradiated in this whole area. And yeah, I just like it. It's like I built variations of this build um, many times on my stream where we just had these Drekos in these nice convenient rooms for starting out with. And we've gone hard on them early on just to get the extra food. Now that we've got the Critter Condo, we'll have nine Drekos per ranch and we'll have 8,000 calories per cycle of barbecue being produced. So it's enough food for eight duplicates, which is a pretty good number to be honest. And obviously it'll take some time to get those Dreco, that Dreco population increased, but it's fairly achievable considering how much excellent you have in your Iridio start. And you don't have to do this on Iridio either. You can do this on any start that has Drecos, that has Wheeze Wards, and just get all of these nice things sorted out in one small compact area where everything's being handled. And you'll actually have the metal refinery online so you can slowly get all of the metal you need to make all of these auto sweepers. You don't have to run all of these auto sweepers right away. Um, you can have your duplicates doing stuff manually for a while, but it's nice knowing that eventually it can all just be fully automated and it's nice and convenient. Yep, there's another nine Draco, so you can see nine out of nine. Um, so they're crowded, but their happiness will go up because of the Criticon though, so they will still produce all of the eggs. Each Draco will produce an egg every nine cycles when they're being groomed and they're happy. So 18 Drekos, nine, nine cycles per Dreco means you get two Drekos per cycle. Each Dreco provides 3,600 calories of meat. No, 3,200 calories of meat. And then you uh, turn it into barbecue. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the build. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video about Drekos, what they can do for you and how they can help you sort out your Iridio start. If you like what you've seen, feel free to like the video and subscribe for more Oxygen Not Included related discussion content, build guides, and a few meme videos as well. Uh, we do stream on Twitch. Um, we play Oxygen Not Included on Twitch. At the moment, it's going to be Mondays and Tuesdays, 7.30 to 10.30 British time. We do also play other games like Mega Aquarium and Isosphere Program later in the week. Um, there is also a Discord channel where we hang out and we post memes and builds and things. Again, mostly to do with Oxygen Not Included. Um, but there's plenty of stuff to do. Um, and thanks very much for hanging out and watching this video. Um, it, it, this one's been a long time coming. I've been trying to actually peg this build down for ages. And we built various different versions of it in each of our different streamed runs. Whenever we've had Drekos. And it's nice that I finally figured out exactly where I want everything to go. And we're going to build this. We're definitely going to build this in the next run whenever we do that. <laughs> yes, thanks very much for watching. And hopefully I will see you soon. Bye for now. Whisker sends thanks to the following Twitch subscribers and YouTube members. Deadeye XL. Grey Area. Nemetrek. Neo Deus Machina. The Max Not Binary. Euglavisk and Wolfreg.